Before we begin with the reading of our verse for this week, would you be all, all be us so kind as to join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to gather here today as your people, as we share your word. We thank you for allowing us to gather here together in your name, for your word and power that fills and sustain us, sustains us. I ask that as we read the word of your apostle, Paul, that you may use my body and mind as a means to communicate, communicate the words of the Lord to your people, but not by my will, but by your will. Amen. Our scripture today comes from Romans 8, verses 1 through 12. As you might recall, Pastor Andy recently went through the book of Romans, and in his message, he went through this very same passage with Romans 7 paired with it. While it is fresh on our minds, let us refresh ourselves on the words of Paul. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit, who gives life, has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do, because it was weakened by the flesh, God did send by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be, truth, be, might be fully met in us, who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Those who live in according to the flesh have their mind set on what the flesh desires. <clears throat> but those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their mind set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives him, gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. Today, we're going to be discussing something that's a bit difficult to discuss, yet so very easy to relate to. We're talking about a struggle that everyone has faced. Even the Apostle Paul, who wrote these words, has faced this struggle. And that is the problem that is living with the human nature of sin. As you might remember from Romans 7's a few sermon series back, sin is a constant struggle that we cannot understand alone without the Spirit. For what we want to do, we do not do. And more often than not, we have a tendency to go and do what we are trying to avoid in doing, in sinning. But we're not talking about Romans 7 today. Today, we talk about how sin is a very human thing. As Paul puts it, sin is confined to flesh. Flesh, of course, being us as people. It's our human nature that imperfectness that has been made so abundantly clear time and time again throughout all of history that brings us to sin. It is sin that brings us death. It is sin that brings us pain. It is sin that enforces the law that condemns us for our very act of being. It is those of us who live in a realm of flesh that have those desires of flesh those material needs, those vices, those moments of sin that we are in a constant battle with 
as people to try and come to terms with. Now, this isn't to say that humans are awful, irredeemable beings just for the fact that we are imperfect. I mean, I'm one to talk. For the Son of Christ, divine though he was, was just as much as a man as you and I. He's an example of what we as Christians are to be, free from the laws of sin and death. He was an offering sent from heaven to show us the way to live in this realm of flesh, against this world of desires, those wants, those vices. He wasn't dwelling in this realm. He was dwelling through this realm. That's quite a large distinction, if you ask me. Not living in the flesh, but living through it, using that humanity to connect with others like you and me, and bringing them to the spirit and the realm of the spirit, where we, brothers and sisters, are freed from this life of death and sin and a constant battle of rectifying something that no amount of good we could ever do would ever make up for. We, by our nature, are sinful, but when led by the Spirit and allowing that lead to be taken by the Spirit, we are freed from sin because of the Spirit's righteousness. We belong to Christ, and though we may face the same death that scares and comes for all, we will be resurrected to a greater place, a better place, one where we are free with brothers and sisters who are like us in a world where we are truly belong, a world that is governed by love and by peace, where we can please our Heavenly Father and can submit to God's law as we are always intended to. But how are we supposed to live through the flesh in the realm of the Spirit? Well, I happen to have wonderful news for each and all, every single one of you. According to Paul, at least, we're already living in the realm of the Spirit, for we're children of God, for we are Christ people. We, as Christians, have already taken that first step towards living in this world of peace and love and separate for death, for we belong to Christ. It is through this that we may become entitled to this peace. It is through this that we may love, and it is through this that we may use as a means to overcome the struggle of sin and its human nature. We have an obligation to our Heavenly Father, who has saved us, to live in this peace. We owe it not just to Him, nor the Spirit, nor or even His Son, who became a sin offering on our behalves, to live this way, but we owe it to our fellow Christians to live a Christly life, and to those dwelling in the world of flesh to lead them to the Spirit, just as Christ Jesus led us to the Spirit before. As Max Lucado put it, God loves us too much to leave us in our sin. So we, as, Christ as followers of Christ Jesus, must also love those around us enough to lead them out of the realm of flesh and into the realm of the spirit so that we may please our Heavenly Father and live as we were called to. As we wrap up today, I would like to thank each and every single one of you for coming here today and for listening to me speak. It has been a blessing to preach for you all today and an equal blessing to have been nominated as a candidate for session. I'd like to close today by thanking you all for allowing me to live in spirit and for always being there as a congregation to lead us in the right direction towards living as Christ has asked us to. Let us pray. Heavenly God, as we ready ourselves to leave this place today, we ask that you be with us, that you guide us as we go out into this world of flesh, this world of sin and death and all that comes with it. And I ask that you lead us where you call us to be. I ask that you assist us in making you proud and lead us and instruct us to where you need each and every one of us to be in your heavenly love as your hands. We ask that you use your all-knowing, infinite wisdom to lead us where we are needed, when we are needed, 
and that you give us the ability to act on your word with all the love and care that we are supposed to have. In all of these things, we ask them in your name. Amen.